Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Aroth, and today we are diving into our first deep dive into the Arcanum spell mod. You guys have requested that I do the Conjuration spells first from top to bottom, so that is what we are doing today. Uh, we're going to dive right into the novice level Conjuration spells, and first up is called Bilebite. Bilebite. Bioblight is this wondrous little anti-living spell. Target undead unit takes 30 magical damage. It sprays caustic bile to enemies within 25 feet. Living units hit take 12 poison damage per second and lose 80 armor for 5 seconds. So we're going to have to conjure up an undead to use. We're going to toss in uh, Death's Shadow. Combine that with Bilebite. Let's see, Death's Shadow. There we go. Nope, that's the wrong one. And here we are. All right, we're going to go into Death Shadow in a little more detail later. Right now, I just want to show you Bile Blight. There we go. So as you can see, it does a lot of damage to Death Shadow. This next one will kill him. But it does cause everything around it to get soaked in poison. So this is a spell that I would hold off on until you know your Conjuration is about to die already. Right? So the enemy's coming in for the final blow. He's already dead or dying. And you can go in and just add in that extra touch of poison damage to everything in the vicinity. Thankfully, you are not affected. However, keep in mind that that combination only affects living targets. So if you're throwing your Death's Shadow in against Undead, uh, it, it won't be as helpful. However, if the Undead in question isn't actually yours... Oh, does it still work? Come on. It still works. Still works, does 30 damage. Oh wait, let's uh, do some god mode here. Alright, I can be invincible for most of these spells without having to show you guys how it works. So the spell can be used in just anti-undead stuff, because it does do 30 raw magic damage. Unfortunately, it is a touch-based spell, so there's some obvious risks to using that at melee range with Draugr that really, really wants to get into melee range with a poor little squishy mage like me that has to cheat in order to stay alive. But I, pref I do like the idea of having a spell where you know your undead is about to die and you just need to juice a little bit extra damage out of him before he expires. Uh, the only downside, of course, is that it's a touch spell, so you've got to be maneuvering around the fight, go right in before your undead dies, finish him off, and poison everything else in the vicinity. Next we have Bound Tomahawk. Arcanum has a number of interesting ideas for bound weapons. So your bound tomahawk, you can use it in melee range. Looks pretty sweet right there on the that mesh actually looks really cool. That is awesome. Now, unlike other bound weapons, this one has a nice little feature. And that is it. So you can actually throw your bound weapon when you do a forward powered attack. You have to recast the spell afterwards, so you want to use this judiciously. But as you can see, it hits everything in a straight line in front of you. And this is the best part. It applies all of the bound weapon perks. So extra damage to undead, uh, soul trapping anything that dies, depending on the perk mod that you're running. All of those bound weapon perks can now be applied to everything in a line in front of you, hopefully as they die, and automatically load your soul gems. One can only hope. Next, we're going to Conjure Putrid Imp. Now, for this demonstration, I have to not be in god mode. Alright, our little imp here, our little friend here, has some extra perks. He does this green fire damage. Watch my magic up. When I hit him with a spell, I do 10 extra magical damage, but at the cost of my own magic up. So basically, that blue, that green fire, I should say, is a debuff that allows me to do extra damage when I hit him. But since it uses my Magicka, I couldn't test it outside of God Mode, and you get the idea. Anyway, bottom line is you get extra damage when you hit them with a spell or an attack when they have that green fire on them. And obviously these are novice level spells, so when I spawn in uh, bandits that are my level, <laughs> it won't go to too pretty. However, we can change that with our little friend, the Reekling Tribe Sire. This is another fun conjuration spell. This one, I'm going to read through the description real quick. Summons this creature for 30 seconds wherever the caster is pointing. It deals heavy frost damage. However, while it does a crap ton of damage, it also fully, it 
also fully heals their Magicka and their Stamina. So it's kind of an odd... I haven't looked at the like Restoration Arcanum spells yet, so I'm wondering if there's something that feeds off of the enemy's Stamina or Magicka, because fully healing the enemy's Magicka in combat seems like a bad idea. But as you can see, he does a crap ton of damage. He got rid of this one in two hits, whereas my poor little imp was still helpless after like 10. It does a lot of damage, but you got to be careful who you turn him against, because obviously if you're up against an Archmage and you're giving him all of his magicka back on every hit, it might not go too well for you. All right, now that we've got a nice body to work with, our next spell is called Morbid Obsession. And here we go. Blap. <laughs> So basically, you magically dissect a corpse. And then after you do that, you regain two Magicka per second for 60 seconds, and your max Magicka is increased by 60 for 60 seconds. So if you're running around in a fight, you can be dropping your, tri you know, throw down your summon. Your Magicka is coming up and is now regenerating faster, and you have 60 more Magicka points than before. And then you can whip out your Morbid Obsession spell to dissect any corpses that drop. I have noticed, by the way, that you get a lot of experience when you use that Morbid Obsession spell. You will power level your Conjuration pretty fast, assuming you're dropping multiple corpses every encounter, which seems fairly standard, given how well, Skyrim usually works. All right, our next one is called Oblivion Rift. This is gonna open a volatile portal to Oblivion, teleports the target summoned or reanimated unit to your location. The portal lingers for three seconds afterward, dealing 10 magic da magical damage per second to all nearby enemies. And hopefully our little friend here doesn't kill them too quickly. And there we go. So as you can see, this is almost like playing tag, because you, you tag them with the spell, and they teleport right next to you. But when you hit them with the spell, you see that this first wave over here? Yeah, this lingers for a few seconds, and it does 10 damage per second to the target. So if your conjuration if you know your conjuration is about to die and you want to pull them out of the fight but also do damage to the opponent bloop, there you go anything standing next to that first blast actually i think both blasts do damage if i'm not mistaken let's find out this is a fun spell because i'm not even trying to hit the bandit now i'm just going for my <laughs> conjuration there we go all right let's bring my imp to me he did not come to me all right. Oh, I missed him. There we go. Obviously, it's harder when you're dealing with a flyer. Get over here. There we are. Okay. So obviously, this loses practicality when you're dealing with a ranged creature. Uh, the Reek King Saber thing. Yeah, we'll go ahead and switch to him. He's more suitable for this task, I think. Well, that's not gonna be pretty. Oh, oh, killed him in one hit. Okay. Well, let's uh, try that dance again. And into the Oblivion Rift we go. Wow, okay. So I apparently <laughs> conjured one that was a lot more powerful than I expected. So I guess we'll just uh, play a little bit with our bound tomahawk. Obviously I built a mage here. I did not build a one-handed guy for this demo. But it is nice knowing that you have a lot of combat options you can get out of a spell school. Particularly Conjuration. That is so cool. All right, let's see what we got next. All right, our next spell is Ritualist's Circle. Summons a ritual magic circle at your location for two minutes. Summon or reanimated units within the circle gain 30 health for 60 seconds. You may offer certain items upon casting to change your circle's effects. So this is kind of like the hollow spell that we had seen from clerics where the area around you becomes like anti-undead or better healing or something like that. But in our case, it actually boosts the health of your conjured and your undead minions. Yes, yeah, summon and reanimated minions. See, he's got the little sort of circle around him, the little glowing circle orb thing. Uh, that means he gets bonus health, which considering he's super squishy, is also super helpful. So this is something I would drop at a choke point so that your opponents are suddenly forced to and face your boys at melee range while they're getting extra health from the ritual spell. I think if you're gonna add in any of the extra items to do more magical effects, you have to actually have them in your inventory first, and I don't know what they are because they're not included in the description. So that's something you guys can unlock during your own playthrough of Arcanum. All right, next we have Altar's Reap. This is a very useful one because 
well, you'll find out later. There are some fulfillments that you want to use in a short burst, not all at once. Anyways, this one instantly kills an allied reanimated unit or banishes an allied summon unit. You regain 10 magicka per second, and your conjuration spells cost 20% less for 20 seconds. So all you gotta do is zap your guy, bloop, kick him back to oblivion, and then you feed off of his magical energy, giving you extra magicka regen, lots of magicka regen, and more magicka regen. So let's go ahead and pop out of god mode. I'm gonna find something expensive here. What's a good expensive spell to cast? I know, I'll give you guys a peek into what's coming in the next video. We're not gonna be able to, to give her a lot of detail, but as you can see, my Magicka regen is a lot higher than before. Almost to the point where I can start spamming this spell as needed, and I just keep regenerating. Uh, so combining a conjuration of any, conjuring anything basically, and combining it with Alter's Reap, gives you some insane uh, magicka regen. If you combine it with certain other spells... Oh, did you see resist it? I think he totally resisted it. Oh, nope, he did not. I just missed. Huh, there you go. Alright, so it's kind of a fun way to, especially when you get the perks that allow you to have multiple summons, allows you to manage the number of summons versus how much magicka regen you need. So, or even at the end of a fight, if you're trying to regenerate. You can feed off of the, the summon that you know is going to wear off soon anyway and get a whole lot of magicka back for your trouble. Okay, next we have Betrayal of Flesh. We are going to curse a living target with necrotic energy, causing their flesh to decay and dealing 12 magical damage per second for 10 seconds. If the target dies while cursed, they gain 70 bonus health when reanimated. So I believe we are still in god mode, so let's go ahead and bring in our unlucky uh, attendee. Is someone there? And bon appetit, sir. So this is a adept, apprentice level spell. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it does continue to hurt for it's 10 damage per second for 120 seconds. So it'll do 120 damage in two minutes. You just have to, oh geez, I forgot I'm not in god mode. Huh, well, there we go. Okay, so we're just going to uh, switch to god mode real quick. That will give me the magic that is necessary to turn this guy into a thrall just to show you guys what this spell is like when it kicks off. All right, so since we killed this guy with the Betrayal of Flesh spell, he will come back with 70 additional hit points more than a regular dead thrall or conjured minion, or if you reanimate a zombie, yeah, they, they'll come back with extra health. So you're basically, des it's designed to use Betrayal of, threat, eh, betrayal of Flesh with one of your reanimation spells. Obviously, Dead Thrall is a two-handed one, so that's kind of a poor example. But any of the regular reanimation spells used in one hand and Alter's Reap in the other would then allow you to get all your Magicka back. And if you use it with Betrayal of Flesh instead, then you would be able to boost the health of your Conjurations, which at earlier levels means a lot to me because I always got a little tired of... Why can't I get this to work? Maybe? Oh, okay. Alter's Reap apparently only works on summoned things. That's good to know. I thought it would work on my undead. Apparently it did not. Good to know. All right, next we have Bound Ceremonial Dagger. Let's see if we can get into those details as well. One of the problems with Arcanum is you can see how detailed some of these spells are, and it can be really hard to read them all off the screen, especially if it goes over six lines. Okay, create a magical ceremonial dagger for 80 seconds. It deals 20 bonus damage to enemies below 20% health. So this is designed for assassination rogues, because there's extra damage when the foe is already weak. Killing an enemy with this dagger has a 20% chance to summon a Dremora based on your level. So we're going to hop out this puppy. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, always takes this extra second to conjure. Uh, let me make sure I'm in god mode. Okay, we're going to finish off my little thrall here first. Whoa. Okay, this is, this is an example of either my mage's complete lack of ability with one-handed weapons or the amount of extra health that this reanimated thrall got when I res them. So take either of those as you see fit. But notice the damage. Once he's down to 20% health, you're going to see a startling increase in damage output from the dagger. Almost there. Come on, baby. There we go. Whoop. All right. Oh, good. We've got another one. Okay, the only downside here, you know what, we're going to toss in Betrayal of Flesh because it's going to take too long. Oh, of course he would resist that. Okay then, I will introduce you to my other little friend. 
There, you can take care of my little Minerex spider. This is, she's, she's not even supposed to be in this video, but you had to be difficult, didn't you? Yes, you did. All right, so the downside with the dagger is you have to actually get the killing blow in order to trigger the real reason why you use this thing. The extra damage when they're already almost dead is nice, don't get me wrong. That right there is helpful, but this is what you want. There you go. You have a 1 in 5 chance of summoning a Daedra when you kill with the ceremonial dagger. So if you want to do a walkthrough as a servant of Hermaeus Morda or the really bad Daedrus, uh, getting a kill with the dagger will do that just fine. Uh, keep in mind, when you have a lot of conjurations at your back, you don't necessarily have to run in and actually bring someone down to a hunt. You, know, you don't have to kill them the old-fashioned way with the dagger. Just wait until they're low health and then come in and finish them off with the dagger. Booyah. But as you can see, summoning a Dromora into your combat, even for only 60 seconds at the price of a, a, a apprentice level conjuration, is uh, that's, that's gold. That's fun. Especially if you're up against lots of little guys, because... It's just a 1 in 5 chance whenever you get the killing blow. So if you're up against a wolf pack, you have a, what, 1 in 3 chance of summoning this puppy? And then he'll back you up for the next 60 seconds, which is not a bad deal. Alright, next we are looking at Death's Shadow. So let's have a look at his description. Summon a Death's Shadow for 2 minutes at the caster's location. It gains power and new abilities for each 10% of your missing health. So it, this is something you conjure when you're already wounded. Now, here's the catch. While the shadow is summoned, you cannot heal past the amount of health you had when you cast the spell. So this can be a little tricky, not gonna lie. We're going to combine this with equilibrium and pull me out of god mode, show you guys how this best works. So I'm gonna use that equilibrium, suck out a lot of my health, Probably go with about, you know, we'll, we'll go with quite a bit. There we go. All right, now we summon our Death's Shadow. Now you remember earlier in the demo, this thing died super, super fast. Super, super fast. We're gonna actually go into God mode real quick because I don't want to die while I'm doing this demonstration. All right, we've brought in a happy victim and our w formerly weak little uh, Death's Shadow is going to deal with him. As you can see, he's doing like 10 times as much damage as before. I think there's some kind of a life drain going on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, obviously, Death's Shadow now does a crap ton more damage. I think he's actually bigger, too, now that I've uh, fed him 90% of my life force. But here's the check catch. I can't heal past the health level that I have when I conjured this guy, right? So the only way to undo it is either wait for the spell to wear off or hit him with Alter Reef. There you go. Now you can slip back once he's... Wait, should be gone. Come on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Go, go away. I want my health back. Okay, apparently this one, I don't know, maybe it's because you literally gave up your life force to summon him? Might have to actually wait for him to go away. Oh, that's scary. Okay, so keep that in mind that whenever you summon this guy, the weaker you are, the lower health you are, the stronger he will be. And as you can see, he did a lot of damage, but the downside is you can't heal past this until he wears off. Unless you have, unless you want to try killing yourself, but given uh, I don't recommend it because uh, yeah, I'm squishy right now. All right, next I want to look at Daedric Resonance. For 30 seconds, the target loses 10% magic resist and has five magical damage whenever they are struck. If the attacker is a Daedra, the damage is tripled and Daedric Resonance duration is reset. If they die during the duration, this fills a soul gem. So we're going to prep for this by bringing in the Frost Thrall. If you guys are at all familiar with Frost Ochinox, you'll know they are not the primary damage dealers of the Conjuration Mage's arsenal by any stretch of the imagination. However, they got lots of health and lots of armor. So we're gonna throw in Daedric Resonance, which should triple the amount of damage this puppy can do to a target. And now that I'm in God Mode, we should have ample opportunity to demonstrate that. Oh, jeez. Again, please. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was the weakest Autronach, at least as far as regular damage is concerned. The Frost Autronach is meant to be a tank. not <laughs> He's not meant to three-shot uh, bandit outlaws. But if you lay on Daedric Resonance on the target, which is a lovely ranged spell, 
Think of it like a Soul Trap spell, but it does it makes them vulnerable specifically to Atronach damage, which works out quite, quite well. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me on this first deep dive into the Arcanium Conjuration spells. This is going to be a lot of fun. I believe I have two more Conjuration videos planned, and then we'll move on to either Illusion or Restoration, depending on what you guys request next. But don't forget to like the, channel, the video and subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.